<laughs> action. Yeah. Welcome back to the podcast. It's me and your host, Jeffy Jeff. <laughs> Are we starting? Are we starting? Yeah. You starting? Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah, it's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> so Jefferson. Yeah. Jefferson, Mahan. Welcome back. Is that what you want to go by, Mahan? Yeah, I guess so. I'm not going to go by. <laughs> Just literally, I can't even say it. So yeah, welcome to the most fashionable podcast in the world. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about today? What are you wearing, bro? Okay, so you already know, I got a pair of cotton fleece. So they're 100% cotton uh, sweatpants from the brand Cotton. Um, got them on the sale, you know, they're like some like khaki brownish green. Um, I got the Uniqlo U Collection t-shirt, not the Airism one. <laughs> you already know what it is. With the extra cropped hem, size extra large. Uh, and you got on the fake Chrome Hearts jewelry, you feel me? Iced out, fully loaded with an AP. That's it. What about you? What you got on today? <clears throat> I got the Champion Fuck collab. Uh, yeah, I had it for years. And I just got my olive green dickies, just uh, casual work pants. Freaking, uh, yeah, I got my Chrome Hearts rings. And uh, I just got this from St. Terror. It's a DMX, uh, what do you call it? Memorial piece or something? Oh, from like his death? Yeah, Rough Riders, yeah. Yeah, RIP. Uh, there's skulls in it. And then um, this is just a ghost by Vintage by Yordi. Yeah, Halloween, Halloween uh, collab. I say, now we've gone through our fits. Uh, I feel like a good place to start is, what's up with green? I feel like green's been taking over the last few years. Yeah, you're in green, you're in like sage green, I'm wearing green pants. Yeah, exactly. I feel like there's been a big renaissance of color, starting with earth tones. Like, I swear, you used to only wear black. Uh, everyone's picking up green lately. I, 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 I used to wear black because everyone used to only wear black, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a thing where you just wear all black and it just looks good. Yeah, it's a renaissance. I literally got all black on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our editor. You already know what it is. Yo, let's pick up the conversation we were having earlier with the Uniqlo clones. With the Airism shirt? Uh, the, yeah, the Airism shirt. Yeah. I think it's kind of, uh, what do you call it? Overrated now. There's yeah. a meme about it, right? Is it? The meme, the meme is like, um, if you have like a perm, you have like those uh, Uniqlo shorts and the Airism shirt, the, like the, the one that everyone got. Yeah. That's the look. That's like, that's the summer look, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can just pick those out from like um, anywhere. Yeah, and you throw on some fucking... Um, Pandas? Uh, nah, nah, throw on some, what do you call it? Uh, CDG. Uh, oh, Converse. Yeah, oh you know what I God. mean? That's like the quintessential su- summer look. Well, that's actually cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't wear that right now, they probably think they're super fashionable. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah, that's like, I feel like the last three years of like fashion memes all cooked into one atrocious outfit. Like, I don't think the Airism T is bad, like as a basic or a staple. Like, it's definitely, like, a bit of an elevated basic. You know, you got, like, a heavier fabric. It's got a polyester mix, um, which allows it to be quick drying. But I definitely think it's, like, so accessible. Like, you see all walks of life wearing it. I feel like that kind of impacts the branding of it. Because, like, when the shirt came out, right, I was working at Uniqlo. And it came out, everyone's like, yo, this is kind of dope. It's cool that they released this new, like staple this new basic because everyone only had like this one like this was the u clue shirt that you'd see people rock if you wanted to wear something a little heavier a little bit more boxy and like oh they released something new it's a little different that's cool <clears throat> and oh. we had this fucking manager how much is the airism shirt um it was 1990 when it came out it's 2490 right now 2490 for sure and then it's like um what's the airism mean again it's just that you- airism means it's um it's like dry fit or something essentially but it's designed to have a proclivity to being cold so it gets cold easily so like when the breeze hits or something it helps cool it down oh. with the moisture wicks on your body uh so it's ideal for like the summer exactly it's not ideal for winter like as soon as you get to the cold months and like this fucking breeze hits your skin feels like it has an ice pack on no oh, that's bad okay yeah okay yeah it's good as a staple then but then like um like, I guess the main thing was just that Uniqlo clothes are just being overrated because like everyone just shops there. If you just shop there, you just think uh, you just think you're super fashionable if you just like only shop there, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it, like I think it's a bit overrated. Like the, like the, 
how do you explain it? Like the top five, you know what I mean? Like the top five songs of any charts. Uniqlo's like top five, whatever it is. Like all these like TikTokers who are like, run, don't walk to get the woman's wide pleated pants. Like that's when it becomes overrated. And when you start seeing everybody wearing it and back to like, when you start seeing the wrong people wear it, it really fucks up your brand interpretation. Like the image that you have of your head of it. Yeah, but Uniqlo is mar like marketed as like accessible to all life. Everyone, yeah, yeah, it, right. Yeah, so that's like. Oh shit! It got dark in here. <laughs> oh fuck! We didn't pay the light bill. Okay, as we run through the technical difficulties, uh, continue the conversation. But like, yeah, I feel like it's the double-edged sword. Like, yeah, it's super accessible. Like anyone can have like this entryway to a certain look. But once this like one staple piece, especially it's a top in the summer, it's not like you're wearing anything other than a t-shirt and pants or yeah. shorts. That's th it's the biggest thing on your body. <clears throat> you start seeing it everywhere. Like it's not always bad. Like when you start seeing like Air Force Ones everywhere, you're like, yo, those are old schools. You're like, yo, those kind of fly. I might pick me up a pair because it's a little sprinkle sprinkle that you put onto your fit. But that Airism shirt, is like 90% of people's fit. Like the shirt is the fit. And you start seeing people who can't rock it, just put it on, they just slap it on, anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, like, I'll say this, I think it's like originality plays a big factor in it. Yeah, I guess that was the word, yeah, original. There's, Cause there's like a lot of colors I don't see people rocking. That unique has? Yeah, cause there's bare colors. You pull it to the yeah. wall, it's a fucking rainbow. Like it's LGBT positive, but motherfuckers only got the white, the gray, and the black, you know what I mean? And then they yeah. stick it on with like the ankle pants and that's like their fit. Um, it, it's just like, like I, I'm not knocking it cause like summer is not the most expressive time of the year, but like, you know, you could be a little original, get the fucking like orange um, paprika colorway, mix it up with some like yellow shorts instead. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like to the point of color though, right? Like, Especially when you're wearing like all black, it's hard to stand out. It's you got to play with silhouette. But when everyone has the same silhouette, the only thing you got to play with is color. Okay. I don't think people are doing that, which is why it's like saturating the brand. And it's a lot of um, the people only know about the shirt because of TikTok. So I think there's a herd mentality as well. No, nah, yeah, I think I've seen the meme on TikTok too. But um, <clears throat> yeah, you're right. You're right for sure about the colors. Like, yeah, Uniqlo does that, right? I'll give them that. Like they, they did, I'm not dogging on Uniqlo, like uh, they have good quality. Like, you know, I have like a lot of clothes from Uniqlo and um, they do the colors really nice too. Yeah. Like I just say like, yeah, you know, they're just like graduated, like H&M graduated Zara type shit. Yeah, I, I think like- but They have more of like an Asian uh, type of uh, S going on because it's all from Japan, right? Oh yeah, but I feel like, like Japan's like very Americana. Like when I talked to uh, my Japanese coworkers when they were here from Japan, they said Uniqlo is not cool. Like Uniqlo is like that thing you like go get to like make a quick office outfit. It's like Walmart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like Sears. Literally. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but like, so Sears. I think the problem with here is like when you do your fashion shit in um, Canada, especially like Toronto, I think we all had our phase where we shopped at H and M, and then we found out H and M's kind of like crappy. We, we we stole from Urban Outfitters, you know what I mean? Yeah, because that was kind of like uh, that like Jersey Shore era type of vibe, you know? Like everybody got the colorful skinny jeans on with the tight ass cardigan and shit. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, and then like eventually Ages. the skater aesthetic popped in and then people are rocking zoomies and then you got the people wearing too many logos, too many graphics, too many prints. You got like the fucked sweatpants with the Huff weed socks with the box logo, you know, and you're just a walking billboard. And Uniqlo is a bit of a fresh of breath of fresh air because it's not trendy most of the time. There are staples, aesthetics, and fits that are like kind of timeless that you can incorporate into your wardrobe. And you could do it creatively with size and fit in order to actually execute something original. But I think a lot of people have a hard time grasping that. And what they do is they look towards all these new and up and coming 
um, like fashion bloggers, fashion tastemakers, influencers, whatever they are, and they're all regurgitating the same advice. And I think the staleness comes from a lack of individuality, not purely by Uniqlo selection, but more of like where people are digesting their advice from. You know, are you saying people shouldn't shop at Uniqlo anymore? I don't say people shouldn't shop at Uniqlo anymore, but I think people need to like... Shop there less? No, nah, you, know, you know what it's like? Like, you know Anthony Fantano? Yeah, I know him. Yeah, okay. I think everybody who's into music has a phase where they stumble on to Anthony Fantano and they're like, oh, like this guy reviews albums I know. And you like go in the rabbit hole of like seeing how he reviews albums you like. And you're like, yeah, that song was good. That album was good. This guy has good opinions. And then you start listening to his reviews before you listen to an album, before you have your own opinion. <coughs> and now you go into that album with a tainted perspective. Like, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Like sure. you don't, it, it deprives you of original thought. And I think people who get into like fashion or even like just trying to look good but they purely base it off um, an influencer's opinion um, just get devoid of individual individualism or individual thought and I think Uniqlo is more of a it plays a part in it rather than being the cause of it I like how on like the topic how Shopping in like the women's section and shit, it's becoming more normalized. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of uh, men are getting the wide pleated pants that Uniqlo has in the women's section. And that's also another big trend on TikTok, which I think also helps with the elevation of originality. I think people should look in both aisles way more because oftentimes you can find things in the women's section when it comes to size and fit that wouldn't normally be found in the men's section and a lot of like men's clothes um i find like the things that are like fashionable are just repurposed women's wear like women's wear with a little different like you know like we had the <coughs> pants with the slits like women's been having pants with slits um shirts with uneven hems or the side slits in 2013 that's just women's clothes like women's yoga clothes was doing that before 2013 before kanye came out so i think it's a lot of like trying to come up with silhouette shape stuff that you're actually thinking of and trying to test with which no, is dope. I, yeah no i yeah i agree i like that we're going more into like drogness like uh, people are more comfortable with it and everything even dudes are like you know like raising their shirts more to a point where they're almost being propped and everything like that you yeah, know what i mean just not only it's just the pants and everything like that so i agree but um now you said something um about Kanye, what was it? Oh, the 2013 Kanye aesthetic with yeah, the slides. Yeah, I remember, and all I remember that. now. Um, <clears throat> I feel like fashion's always been like that, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. guy fashion's always been a bit more restrictive. Uh, even when, like, look at the office where we were talking about it at one time. Yeah. Like, um, with office where as a guy, it's hot as fuck outside. Like, you can only wear so much to actually, like, like you know, slides up your, uh, yeah. your, uh, your outfit and everything. You can put on a jacket, but it's going to be so hot outside. Yeah. You can only wear so much... Only so many light jackets or whatever type <laughs> yeah. of thing. You saw me in the vest uh, recently, yeah. yeah. But, um, so I think guys' fashion is always going to take after like girl fashion in a sense. And then because um, girl fashion is always super expressive and everything. Yeah. Even with the jewelry. Yeah, because like I feel it, this is the thing I don't understand about um, office wear that we're in the topic of. If you go into um, Uniqlo again, they have a section that's like purely office wear and they got like crepe tank tops, drape tank tops that are like polyester and shit. Like they're made out of like, essentially what business clothes are made out of or like business casual clothes are made out of, but it'll be like a tank top with no stretch or like a chiffon pleated like shirt, maybe something that's like a little off shoulder, maybe something that's a little bit more cropped or like frilly, which is still office appropriate if you put on like, it depends on your office, a pair of jeans that are like not ripped or washed or you could put them on with a pair of slacks but with guys like you only really got like a polo you know and nine times out of ten like it's like a branded polo by some vendor who sells into your company or whatever yeah. um you got the polo you got a few options you got the sporty polo you got the hey, knitted you can, polo you, you the, do the long polo. sleeve polo you know what I mean? yeah you know like the, like a rugby 
and then you have your dress shirts you have your, your and it's like quintessentially the same thing it's like it's that dress shirt silhouette but like it'll be an oxford which is like canvas maybe a broadcloth which is like a woven like textile that looks a little bit more preppy but it's almost always the same silhouette it's just you switch the fabric um and then uh, even like the finance bros that have to wear their jackets all the time yeah like i don't know how they do it in the blistering heat yeah in the blistering heat i've seen like they make dress shirts now where like they have like a ventilation panel around here and here like where your armpits are but it's never like how women have like the option to wear a tank top but it's just made out of like polyester and no, stuff. they could just wear a blouse what's it called the girls in my office they just wear a blouse and they see like i'm not i'm not it's not like i don't want to wear a polo yeah but like um i'll wear a polo if i have to but then uh other than that i'm just wearing a dress shirt realistically yeah right? and I, i'll throw a sweater on it like realistically you said a rugby you can't be wearing a rugby in a sweater in the summer it's, yeah it's gonna be hot as fuck yeah that's, that's exactly yeah. it just feels mad restrictive so i like how it is becoming more androgynous and there's like more options for everyone to wear like we even have like linen shirts right but i feel like wearing a linen shirt to the office is like a huge double-edged sword because it's like a little casual and it also crumples so like you'll be sitting down all day and you stand up and you're like ass flap looks like a fucking accordion and now you're like walking around the <coughs> office with like an accordion with uh with that you just it just goes against the thing where it's like with office where that is like um you either it depends on like if you get the shirt that's tucked in or you untuck it you know what I yeah mean? that's just about just getting the perfect length uh dress shirt that doesn't like you know what i mean yeah there's a brand like um i don't even know where it's, it's probably in the u.s or some shit but they do like um just the right just the right length uh like uh dress shirts yeah just so because like you know that's the fucking age old problem when you're tucking your shirt and everything mm -hmm. you put in your pants and everything you're just looking fucking hella weird yeah reason. you get super wrinkly i've never figured out how to properly tuck in a shirt you, you have to get like a shirt that's like really long mm -hmm. and then um you tuck it in and you gotta like pull it out a bit you know what i mean where it kind of like rest yeah shit like that no i know about that like i just feel like there's like something that some people are doing where it, like it just stays so I'll, pristine okay, i'll tell you this there's another thing there's a thing i actually used to have it what um it's like suspenders yeah you attach them to your socks this one was for my, for like for boxers if you don't want your boxers to ride that's what i had it for yeah but motherfuckers also had it for their shirt so basically you tuck um, it in underneath no no so it's just, you tuck your shirt in and then it clips onto your shirt to keep it uh, yeah yeah and then you tuck it you probably do it on your boxers or something like that or your pants uh, that's it yeah and then um no matter even no matter what you're doing that shit's gonna keep your shirt like as if, they, if someone was constantly pulling, pulling it down, it down. I hear that. Yeah, it's like Amazon. No, I was talking to uh, one of my coworkers. She came from Gucci about like the tucked in shirt. I think there's something about like when you have a shirt tucked in. I think that's what crop shirts are trying to emulate. But it's like that flap where this part kind of sits over your shirt. Yeah, that, that's what makes it not wrinkly. Yeah, I think that's what like elevates the look. But I think it's such a fine line to walk. Yeah like seinfeld used to do a lot of that where he had those like really oversized like dress shirts would be like purple tucked into his jeans and then he had that fold but i think like sometimes you get like that balloon effect you know what i mean where you look like some dude who works in microsoft who's just wearing a shirt that doesn't fit his body and it's like tucked in atrociously yeah no i think um what the rest of whatever you're wearing like your shoes your yeah. pants and everything yeah. and the colors like would counteract <clears throat> that like you know you're yeah, just like, looking like like an IT dude who works in Microsoft yeah shit. especially like your hair and shit like if yeah. you, you know you got like some like grease slick back hair yeah it looks kind of weird uh, but yeah definitely if y'all watching this make some expressive clothes for men to wear in the office we're tired of wearing dress shirts okay let me ask you a question about that what do you think about um, like I think I've seen this before it's like a hoodie blazer Oh, so you've seen it probably too. I don't. I, I don't. Know. Wait. Okay. Let me ask you. Is it like the hood and the blazer are two separate pieces? Nah, it's the same thing. So it's made out of the same body of the blazer. Yeah, yeah. It's the hood. There's a hood on the blazer, and then it's like the blazer is made out of, of some sort of material where it looks um, fitting. Like it looks more like a like almost like a, a, a like a sweatsuit. Huh. I see. 
That sounds kind of cool. I don't know if I've seen it, but it kind of reminds me of like the. You like, think that should be fitting in the office? Um, no, nah, but <laughs> fuck, I have I have an idea. I want no one to steal this, but fucking in Naruto, uh, when Naruto gets married, they yeah. come up with the sickest piece, and it's basically a pullover tuxedo. Pullover. So it's like like it has oh, like the thing, but it you know has I mean? pants too, or no, what? No, 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 no. It's like an anorak. So it's like already stitched on here. So you pull it over, and it ha- and the band is kind of like a kimono, but it's like flipped over, I think. So it's like a pullover tuxedo kimono. Yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, you got the pick. This is a it's Hugo Boss. Oh, it's nine hundred dollars. No, that's actually that's dumb as shit. Yeah, screenshot yeah. that. Send that to Yucky. It's definitely like an athletic type of wear thing, but I think the hoodie's removable too, which is dope actually. But uh, I guess the whole point is to wear it together. Here, look, uh, I'll send this to Yucky to show. But look, is this not fire? For like, nah, that's super fire. If I, if I see someone wearing that uh, in the office or some shit, yeah. I'd be like, you're, you're overdressed. Bro. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, it. nah, <laughs> it's like, it's fucking, it's Tuesday, bro. Like, <laughs> nah, that's so fire. Yeah, yeah. Nah, so I need to make that. Yeah. Someone already probably did make that. Yeah, like, you know, I, I, want, I want to put that into Fujitsu still, because I was doing like the, the kimono blazer, right? Just for like the menswear shit. But I think that is like peak. <clears throat> so wear it with a t-shirt maybe. Don't wear it with a dress shirt though. You're going to look hella overdressed. Yeah, what's your what's your next thing with Fuji Show? You see, you got the sweatsuits coming out again. Uh, oh, they're repurposed. Yeah, repurposed Roman sweatsuit. Uh, just for context, I have a little fashion brand I work on the side, and we did like a woman's sweat set, and then, um, like it was a little too drapey, and we just <laughs> made it more form fitting um, around the waist um, and the butt because there's like a lot of. Uh, draping going on that like, shouldn't be there like a diaper butt yeah so we re- we got that tailored we got it reworked and we're gonna try to release it as like a 2.0 um uh, just so it's like a little bit more flattering i want to get that through i still have some like some of those sweat t-shirts the black and white block stripes oh yeah yeah i want to get that through to pick oh, up oh, a budget the jail t-shirts yeah um, I think, honest to God, like, I need to kind of go back to just making things like I really liked. And I think <clears throat> I'm going to go towards that, like, menswear vibe that you could kind of wear to the office that you don't normally see. Because I like, um, like, it's kind of like oversized dress shirts, um, but that aren't like so conventionally, like with the cuffs and everything. Yeah, stuff. Nah, like, you have some nice office fits. It's yeah. always like super baggy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's still like, I'd say appropriate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want to kind of go more down that direction. So like, people have more more options to wear. Like, instead of like dickies, like I really fucks with the flares. I feel like flared pants for men are like super limited right now. Um, they limited? No, I don't think they're limited. I, I think, like you, like, like, you see them everywhere, right? But I think when you go shopping for them, like, go on Essence and type flare and, like, try to find something that you would want to buy. And nine times out of ten, it's, like, $350 and yeah. it's 58% that's off. That's on that's on Essence, though. That's on Essence. I, I agree. I don't but, think people are getting them on Essence. I think they're getting it off of, like, minimal fucking ASOS. Well, uh, yeah, like ASOS here, we get customs. Like I think people are still paying them. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, but it's like it's like I feel like it's a little like like you're getting raped on the customs, nah, and then the are. quality is like atrocious. Like I've never ordered something on ASOS, and I was like, thank God I bought this. Yeah, nah, like, I guess true. I gotta make this work. Nah, I know you. I know you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, I already came. And the fucking uh, the guy at the door charged me again. <laughs> yeah, I only paid double. Yeah, it was like uh, a ransom though. I'll say, um, do you know about Weekday? Uh, the brand? Yeah. I think so, yeah. So it sounds familiar. For, for y'all that don't know, Weekday is a brand owned by H&M. So if you think of um, the Gap structure, it's Old Navy, Gap, and then Banana Republic um, in terms of like elevation. And then H&M has cause 
And then the middle brand is weekday. Is that Republic so trash? I did a rebranding apparently, but I yeah, this is trash. And a lot of people argue like old money aesthetic. But like I just think old money aesthetic is like <coughs> Bro, it has like old lady aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I I don't know. Old money aesthetic is definitely trash. It has like old cranky lady aesthetic. Yeah. Old cranky lady. Like ALD without the drip. Even though like, yeah, I don't even want to like, get like a Gab, Gab, Like Gab can actually get on for a bit. Like, yeah. And then even, um, I'm not saying anyone shops at Old Navy anymore, but I think Old Navy um, is like more appropriate to be more generic. Yeah. Everyone, right? Yeah. But that's what I mean. But like Banner Republic supposed to be like kind of like more elevated, like a little bit more pristine, like a little bit upper. They're like, quality supposed to be better their materials whatever and like the store's overall vibe that's why they charge more that's what like causes like you know creation of style cos um like it's cool like you go in and you're like oh these are some sick pieces until you see the price tag it's 80 dollars 120 dollars for a t-shirt yeah it's like pretty whatever yeah so weekday um i got a few of my pants from there because they're like selection is a little bit more curated like they don't have a whole lot and it's way more trendy. Like I got a pair of um, canvas slacks from them. So it's like a little bit more rustic. Um, it's like very baggy and it has a nice like flow to it. And I even got a pair of like flared trousers from them. Like quality still could be better, but at least it's like in that like a hundred dollar ballpark, like affordable price range for a piece of clothing. So that's where I'm at, but they're also UK based, so you still gotta pay taxes on them. I just feel like I like what I was trying to do with Fujitsu, where like it's at least a middle ground, where like sure you're paying like 180 for a pair of pants, but like you're not gonna find something for that price range that isn't like designer or the quality is awful, and I'm just trying to bridge that gap. Um, so that's what I'm trying to get back into. I think, like, I kind of miss the denim kimonos of the olden days. Like, I think it was way more streetwear inspired. I think it was more creative too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. you just don't see someone really seeing a kimono. Yeah, and it's like a denim one of all things. Yeah, it's a Sherpa denim kimono. It had the back zipper that split, and you look like a fucking beetle. Yeah, I remember, I remember G would wear, it. and then when he used to have the man bun, you yeah, look, you look like a samurai. Yeah. yeah, it looks super hard. So I think I'm gonna maybe go towards that route, like just play around with fabrics again. I just want to make Fujitsu more like just shit I want to wear that's not accessible or findable. Um, and just level it up because like nine times out of ten even like I think we'll get into this later I'll, I'll show you the cop that I just did like I bought these Alix pants and there's like a type of stitch that you do for a double stitch that is like a higher quality and I'd like expect it out of like something that retails for like eight hundred dollars yeah uh, but they didn't have it they didn't have it just the cover stitch where you just like fold it over and then stitch once over so it's like a fake double stitch uh, it's just like something I'd expect from like H and M, Zara. Oh, okay. You know okay. what you mean? So did you get it done or not? Um, I got the shortened, but you that would it, like you require you open the whole double stitch, and then you'd have to fold the two edges together like this, and then stitch over the two sides of the edge. Uh, it's not something people do. It's something you do in construction, and it's like even with the woman's sweat set. Like I think we're selling it for like 150, 200, something like that. Um, I forget what the price is, but even those sweats have a fucking, it's, I think it's called the lap seam or yeah, it's a lap seam um, on the sides, which is like, you never see that on sweatpants and just bringing that quality and construction because it doesn't cost much more to do. And I think it just um, creates a product that has way more longevity. It has a nicer feel and it stops it from like, being tossed into the landfill like with all other shit i even like kind of missed the double-sided jackets like the two-way like you wear one side nylon white side sherpa gives it a oh, lot just more like, wear. A re like a reversible thing yeah exactly or, or, yeah that jersey i copped recently is reversible yeah it's like uh one side's like purple and then like it says uh yeah it's not the one to play with on the back and then yeah. uh, the other side's uh it's like all black. Oh, it says yeah. I'm the one to play with. Nah, nah. It just <laughs> um, it says Playboy, and it's oh, like yeah. it's like zero. But um, nah, that's actually that was actually a really good jersey. It was like hella fucking thick. Yeah. Like, they they low key made two jerseys 
and sold them together. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's actually a good brand. Yeah, I agree. It's giving you a lot more wear and purpose out of your shit. No, no, nah, nah, those, uh, those, like, it was, like, one of those small LA brands and yeah. everything, and those ones are usually trash. Yeah. Like, um, like uh, the quality is usually terrible, too. It's just, like, screen print and everything. Yeah. This one's actually really good. I, I forgot. I was, um, I was actually watching. Yeah, they're, they're stepping up still. Um, a guy who makes his own clothing brand. I forgot who it is. But he was essentially saying like, yo, I have to move my production to China because he was like doing everything out of L.A. And it's like, bro, like L.A., you're paying like like regular upscaled ass fees. Like no one's doing minimum wage, right? Like they're charging you a premium and it's like a shittier factory. It's a shittier warehouse. Like, bro, you've like been to a, like a Taco Bell drive through. I've been in corporate like no one wants to work over here. You move it over to China they're way more efficient they're way more technical they have way more years of experience and it's cheaper like it's so hard to be like no i'm gonna do it in-house when you're paying more for an inferior product but you slap made in us and you think it's good yeah. meanwhile i'm out here paying 285 dollars for some made in usa new balances where they got like quality control issues on the tongue one's waffled the other one's fucking smooth like my brain well, I'm saying paying extra for that wrinkle. For nah, nah, I know, I know what you mean. What's it called? Uh, brands that actually do it from China and everything are still smart. But then, like, uh, I'm not. I, I think you can still get some quality stuff from uh, Made in USA. You know what I mean? I think so too. But I think like it's, it's like luck of the draw. I think the dude. I forget your brand's name. It starts with a Y. He essentially makes very complicated knits. Like you'll make a knitted polo, and the whole thing is knitted with a wave type of okay, thing whatever, like a, yeah. and yeah, then a each one's a different a color pattern, yeah it's a wave pattern and each color each like waves is a different color so it makes like this really like golf la flair type of like effect very colorful very bubbly very expressive like you probably still wear it to the office because it's a knitted polo yeah yeah but it's just like different from everywhere else's exactly and he said like he'd get it done in the u.s and they'd always like fuck up his samples there's always quality control issues because they don't have the technology it's not something that we have a proclivity towards making here like we have like denim denim simple you just weave it normally we've been able to make a denim loom for fucking centuries hmm. it's like when you start getting into like this 3d knit l technology where like we're kind of behind the factories in china it's like they bro they make the machine that does the knit it just makes sense that they would get the latest updates there. Otherwise, yeah. like what you, no one's pr doing production in the U.S. So what reason do you have to buy a hundred thousand dollar knitting machine, fly it over here, pay the import fees, and now you gotta sell it for double to even make back your money? Meanwhile, they have it there and they're charging you like fucking twenty cents on the dollar to make it over there. Um, I guess on the topic of China, though, uh, we were talking about earlier. Uh, how do you feel about this rep culture? <clears throat> I love rep culture. What's it called? Yeah, what's mm -hmm. it called? Blue light culture. I love it. I love it so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I'm big about. I'm big on uh, uh, graphics and everything. Yeah. But again, you can always make so much uh, interesting stuff with just like graphics and like with rep culture. But um. Now you're talking about the replica like sneakers, right? That we were talking about. Yeah, well, I think it's like all of them. And so, just to like, I guess, put a definition on it. I think what rep culture is is designer or hype, or even general releases. But like, essentially, it's still like the other one too. There's almost like that parodying one. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's a little different. I think that kind of goes into like knockoff territory. They're technically reps, like you're, like the Jordans that have like the pistol on them or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, there's like a thousand of those out there. Yeah, and like I think those are equally as valid, but I just think like if a dude, not a dude, if Nike pays $20 to make a shoe in China and then they sell it here for $200 and then some asshole goes to the store and buys all 40 pairs and then he tries to sell them to you for $400 and you're now somehow creating like some like peer pressure bully culture. It's like, what? You didn't want to pay $400 for the fake leather panda dunk lows? Like, what, funny. what are you? Like, That's are you? funny. That's exactly the reason people are buying reps, actually. Yeah. It's like, what's it called? Nike's not doing anything about the bots or anything, right? Yeah. No, no one's been doing anything about the bots. And like some people implement shit, but there's always a workaround, right? Yeah, for sure. 
And it's like, bro, sometimes the reps low key, bro, like the panda reps, like are actually better quality than that real thing. Bro, pandas are disgusting. If you don't know, the pandas are like a base layer of very thin, like the shittiest, thinnest leather. And what they do is they get a layer of PU plastic yeah. and glaze it over. So it always looks the same. And that way it minimizes quality control issues with the leather. So your top layer of a panda is all plastic. And then underneath you have a little bit of leather and it's literally the worst part of the grain. Is it like, it's not real leather? No, no it's not is? real leather. It's, well, that part is real leather, but the part you're seeing is the plastic and that's why they crease really bad. It's also why your Air Force Ones crease really bad because it's that plastic. If they were 100% leather, they wouldn't all always be perfect. Like they wouldn't be uh, copy paste because leather has flaws. Yeah. But it also creases and breaks in a lot nicer. Like it has more character and life to it. So it's like you're paying a premium on this product and you're defending people who are being overcharged for this shit. I think it's idiotic. But on the other half, you have like fashion reps, right? With like Rick Owens, I'd say, I think is like a really popular brand people buy reps off. And I think that's more of like, a lot of people like this aesthetic, but people don't have $988 to drop on a pair of jeans with like a zipper going across the whole leg. So you think it's, it's fine for those people to like <clears throat> buy like reps for that? Like, yeah, I guess so. I think like if you could afford to like buy these things like frivolously then all power to you and i do think they come in a better quality the real ones are definitely better made like talking to personal experience but there are reps that are very close and i think like if you're trying to incorporate a piece into your fit especially if it's not like a gucci monogram or yeah. like a louis vuitton monogram because those are like status signaling and it's not even like actual status because like people who have real status wear like quiet luxury yeah you know but i think you're just fake flaunting like you're trying to go to the club and bag like a bbl bandit you know what i mean who's like only clout chasing <coughs> yeah yeah I see so i think that that in itself like there's like some underlying insecurities but that's between you and your therapist i think it's more to do with like I want to wear, get a pair of Rick Owen bandana jeans, whatever, like, but I'm not trying to do a full Rick fit. I'm trying to put them on with my unique little t-shirt and just have like an interesting pair of flares. And maybe like, I want to put on my Rick Owen Ramones, my Dunks, um, maybe my Blincies, maybe I'm going to wear them with a pair of Derbies, but I'm trying to experiment and just like add a little twist to a basic style, but I don't want to spend $1,000 on a pair of pants that honestly if i spent a thousand dollars on i'm not wearing them to the club it's a fucking stupid ass idea you come out the club you got fucking you, you don't like that uh you don't like that type of culture or like you know you buy you spend like thousands on design and everything and you treat it like trash i like i like that idea but <coughs> i like i like that's you know you know that's part of the culture no, that, that is part of the culture i think real rickheads like really do that yeah you know they go to the cardi shows and the opium shows and everything yeah like that. yeah but i think like the real rickheads like really can afford the shit or they like condense it but i think i have like a very like fluid style like it bounces between like contemporary i get obsessed with normcore i like normcore with a twist i might get into like that e-boy aesthetic and it's not something that you want to like sink a thousand into and it's like like, if I have something I really like, uh, and I you don't want to sink a thousands in the evil aesthetic, bro. Yeah, yo, and then <laughs> I, 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 I say, I, like realistically, like you know, this might be a hot take, but Rick Owens is like, like the pinnacle of the e boy aesthetic. Realistically speaking, it's like very overpriced e boy. It's matured e boy aesthetic. It's like if you do Rick Owens, uh, Chrome Hearts. And maybe like rap. Yeah. It's very uh, gothic overall. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. I agree. And it's like, I, it is trendy. Like, I do have like, do you know the raft sweater? The oversized yeah, like, yeah, the black one. Yeah. I have like three of them. One is a knockoff from a brand in Korea. So it's not raft or anything, it's just like its own thing. Um, then I got two that are reps. 
And then... That's three right there, bro. Yeah, yeah, and then I got one real one I got from a sale, like, last year for a gift for myself with, like, the... It's all black and it has a red smiley face on the sleeve, like a big oh, ass yeah, red. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. That was dope. And, like, you could definitely tell the quality difference, but it's not that marginally different where I want to spend thousands yeah. and it's not something I could even wear all the time because, like, it's pure, like, wear it to the ground. Like, dude, wear that sweater to get fucking wings with your boys. You're out here fucking dipping your sleeve in the wing sauce. It's just like unnecessary cleaning. Yeah, I think. you were to the club, right? Or like the, the chicken in the kitchen? Yeah, it's like chicken in the kitchen type, you know what I mean? Like, bro, like I literally gotta take the sweater off. It's, it's the same thing with my kimono hoodie. I got from uh, Fum Fumito, Fumito, I forget what the brand's name is, but like I literally gotta take the shit off because the sleeve out here looking like I'm using leaf blade in Pokemon on the fucking like hors d'oeuvres. Um, yeah, yeah, that's I, me. Yeah, you know, so you're not gonna wear it out just so you can ruin your fit. And then you gotta take it, take it off too, and everything like that. Yeah, like yeah, so it's like better just get the rep. Like exactly, and then you can wear the rep to the ground. And I I done that with the Mesa Margiela Fusions. You know the shoes that look like they got the hot glue cum stains. On? Yeah, yeah, those are dope. Well, I wore the reps to the absolute ground. Like I destroyed them. I had to buy Gorilla Glue hot glue gun to reattach the glue and make sure it stayed. And then I bought the real ones, and turns out the real ones are too fucking heavy to wear to the ground. Like, I'll wear them out, I'll fucking get calf cramps by the end of the day. I wake up in the morning feeling like I did a whole ass leg day. Yeah, ankle weights. Yeah, so like sometimes, like, bro, honestly, super pro reps. Like, yo, get the Rick Owen reps, wear them to the ground. If you like them, buy the real. If you don't, you saved fucking $800 use that somewhere else and like once again i don't like wearing something i care about to a club or something like that one no one's gonna know two you're gonna look pretentious and unapproachable you know what i mean and sometimes you want that look but like maybe not at a social setting maybe you're going to a setting where it's just those people you know what i mean like an art gallery fashion thing a show that maybe that's the appropriate time but like if I go to the club, I'll wear literally my worst shit. I'll wear like some Uniqlo U collection slim fit jeans. You know, I'll wear like my Converse, like the 70s. And I'll wear the fucking Arism shirt. Because <laughs> you kind of want to look approachable. You want to look basic and you don't want to care about your clothes. Like you don't want to care that you come yeah. out. <clears throat> That's like, that depends on like what your, uh, you know, your motive is when you go to the club. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like. You know, I'll go to the club and I just want to go just so uh, I, I'll look like a celebrity that day and everything like yeah. that, you know what I mean? So I'm wearing like my nice fit, I'm wearing all the jewelry and everything like yeah. that. Like trying to be like a Christmas tree inside there. Yeah, but I'd say like alternative. It's like unapproachable, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I hear that. I think it's a 50-50, but I say like you still kind of teether on that like norm core, like where norm core yeah, is like yeah. thing. But but I'm still part of like society and everything. Yeah, exactly. I'm not really part of like the, the upper, upper tax bracket, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're like, bro, if you're wearing like a Rick Owens avant-garde like sweatshirt with the different cutouts, maybe you got like a shoulder pad and then you're wearing like some like fucking flared denim with a giant zipper going up to your ass cheeks. And then it's like a just giant flare, giant like teeth, uh, uh, zipper teeth protruding out your knee. You're going to be fucking destroying Shorty's crotch when you're grinding on her, first of all. And then, you know, like uh, you're, set, you're like biting on your things while you're on the floor, like you're doing the heel bite. Yeah, no, I don't think anyone's really wearing that like to the club. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, so like, when do you wear it? You can't wear it to the office. You know, unless you got a job that allows for it. Like, even when you work retail, they don't want yeah, you, you get, wearing, it, like... like it, you you got to be going to, like, a different club, like, at that point. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's, like, um, that old that old thing. I think once, like, everyone gets into um, men's fashion advice, they come across, like, wear per dollar. Like, they're like, yeah, get a leather jacket. It'll last you forever. You get a lot of wear out of it. So even though if you spend a $1,000... You wear it every day. That's like a dollar per day, which isn't bad. Where if you get a Rick Owens, whatever the fuck, which is kind of like I like Ramones, but if you get a Rick Owens like avant-garde ballerina dress T-shirt and you only wear it like once a year, that's a thousand dollars a year. 
Yeah, well, wait, well, you never wear a t-shirt once a year, realistically. No, but like I'm saying, if it's like a super like avant-garde, like you know, like or back to the bandana pants. Um, no, are they called bandana pants or banana pants? I don't know. Sorry, I'm terrible with nouns, but you know the zipper ones. You can put it on the screen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But like those are somewhat casual, but they're a little standoffish. You stand out a bit. Uh, and there's like impracticality in the utility because one, like if shorty grinding on your knee or whatever, you're destroying her crotch. Two, you're dancing, you're biting on your like on your heels. Maybe you don't like that. Also, the floor at a club is filthy. You're getting like everyone spilt drinks. You go to the washroom, you're getting spilled piss on your pants. Like you know, I'd rather wear some like ankle length. Yeah, jeans. but like, yeah, at the end of the day, like, you know, you're gonna buy these clothes to wear them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they get dirty, they get dirty. I, I, I agree. Like, they get dirty, they get <coughs> dirty, but I don't well, like the rapid um, deterioration of, like, garments I really like. No, nah, for sure not. But then, like, um, like, the fact that it's like, they're not, I don't know how to say it, but like, um, uh, like, they're not investments? No, no, it's not that. Like, over that, low-key, like, they're not really investments, but at the same time, it's just, like, you're getting the clothes for what they're doing, and they're doing what they're doing, right? Yeah. And, like, obviously, you don't want them to degrade in quality a bit faster than usual, but you shouldn't just not wear them, man, like, certain occasions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're going to go to that thing where it's, like, I'm getting this, uh, I spent a thousand dollars for the shirt, the ballerina shirt. Yeah, um, it's like what I only wear it once a year. Yeah, you know what? You know what it is. A funny segue. So, the one time I wore something expensive to the club was my. Uh, is it called T Waps? It's like W T A P S. Fuck, I'm, like I'm terrible with names, but it's that Japanese brand, Wap Taps. I don't know, but essentially it's a crew neck. It's a cotton fleece crew neck, and it's garment dyed. And it has a super boxy fit, like Yeezy type vibes. Fucking three hundred dollar crew neck sweatshirt. I wear it to the club. Everything's fine. Michael doesn't let me hit his vape. Next thing you know, we're in a fucking fist fight. I get home, the shit's like torn. Oh yeah. Like I'm and blood everywhere. You know what I mean? So one, yeah. I'm glad the blood didn't stain it. But I little added a little something. I'm sh- I'm glad the tears were kind of tasteful, because like it adds to the character. But if that shit split, you know what I mean, from the fight. Yeah, but then uh, you got in a fight. When I mean, you get in a fight, you have to understand it. Like, your clothes are going to rip, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. That's not like an everyday, that's not that's like an everyday, everyday occurrence. occurrence. But that's why I, I, oh, one second. Yo, pause real quick, I get a phone call. Actually, you can keep it on. Hello? Hey. Hey, right, um, definitely, I'll see you soon. Bye. Uh, Make magic. All right, we'll do, thank you. Yeah, but all right, yo, shorties be holler, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my point is like, I guess if you're like me and you want to be fashionable and destroy your clothes and you actually care about destroying them, because I, when I like something, I like having it for a really long time. For sure. Like, I wear shit to this day that I bought in like 2018. You know what I mean? And then it like degrades and I like, I try to maintain it. I'll rework it. I'll like cut and sew it. I'll fucking bleach it, dye it, whatever it takes to keep the longevity. But it's like, once you get a piece that's like a work of art, like a Rick Owens piece, like it's to the bone. Like it is what it is. It's finished. Like there's not much reworking it. Um, A lot of it does look better when it's ripped and torn. So if that's what you're going for, it's great. But if it's like something that's like, it's, it looks like a menswear garment, you know what I mean? Like in the sense of like it's contemporary office wear, it's not gonna look good faded, it's not gonna look good ripped, then I wanna maintain this longevity and it's being selective of where you wear it to. And it, like obviously like a, a place, a time and a place for everything. Yeah, no, what's it called? Um, for sure, yeah, I think anyone would agree with that. Yeah. It's like a, like a practical statement. Yeah. But, um, I think you still have to like, um, just understand that um, part of uh, the appeal having something that's like super expensive. Yeah. So I like so I having the authentic item, and it's just like I don't know, like you know, how living like a crazy party life, and then so buying the thing that's like, super expensive is already living the crazy party life. Yeah. And then like living like the crazy party life, going club and 
with expensive shit on everything you're getting. You kind of like live in like real risky and everything yeah. like that. You get home and everything, you know, you fucking smash a shorty, you just throw your, your fucking designer on the floor <laughs> oh, and everything yeah. like that, like uh, Versace I, on the floor. I feel that. But There's a like, huge appeal to that lifestyle. I, I kind of hear that, but like I also see the appeal of like going with like a nice fit that you don't give a fuck about. Because I feel like once you're there, you're kind of like that fashion meme where you're like the dude in the corner. And you're like, no one even knows this is Archive Rick. They don't even know that my tabbies are vintage. They don't even know, you know, like... Yeah, but then you, that's where you can't, you can't like let your yeah. um, outfit become you know, your, your personality. personality. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of agree. I think it's like easier to do. And like, it's hard to do when like you're yeah. wearing such a nice shit. Yeah. Motherfuckers are going to talk about your outfit just like you walk in. But then yeah. it's like... And club is so dark, no one even sees it. So like my point is like, what's the point? You know, you can't see it. No one can see it. Why are you getting it dirty for? Uh, you're yeah, you're going to feel the same taking off your $5 Walmart fit and smashing bro's finance shorty. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's the same end result. I just like wearing those fits where it's you can see it. It can be appreciated. Maybe there's a conversation going around. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that one time, I know. Yeah. But, um, nah, I think we just agree to disagree on this, though. Yeah. And right. we gotta wrap it up for the yeah, first episode. So, yeah, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. This is the pilot, the podcast. We'll pick a name one day. We'll let you know on the screen right here. This has been Mahan. This is Jefferson. Peace. And signing out.